All right, what's up, everybody? We're going to do another WebC demo. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about progressive enhancement with web components um, in the last six years. I don't know, a long time. So I just wanted to go through how WebC could help you build a progressively enhanced component with a nice authoring experience so you don't have to duplicate a bunch of uh, fallback content throughout your project. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the quintessential um, button to increment a number component that you see in a lot of different JavaScript frameworks. And we're going to use that using WebC and Web Components. So uh, if you haven't seen the WebC crash course, I would recommend going to check that one out. We're kind of picking up where that one left off. We have a WebC page template and we are using a WebC layout, which is an 11 day layout using WebC um, for our asset aggregation. And we're just gonna create a new counter component. So we have a counter component file here, mycounter.webc inside of our WebC components, our global components that were used in our project. And we're just gonna use that on our um, page template here. So we're just gonna create my counter. Testing, and you can see we're getting output here, which is nice. Um, yeah. So to create a counter component, first we need to start with a button. You can kind of notice I had a form here, which can which contains my counter um, web component instance, and so I'm just going to create a new button here. So input type button, or if you fancy a button type button. Um, and I'm just going to add some default text here. All right, so the next thing we want to do is add an HTML element that will store the output of the number that we're incrementing. Um, and let's use the H fancy HTML output element. And we'll use HTML here to assign it just a default value of two. All right, so we're getting two back. Um, it's not adding anything because we haven't added any client-side interactivity, but you'll notice if we disable JavaScript, the same markup is available here. Um, and I'm using this little JavaScript uh, disabler extension inside of Chrome to do that. So the next thing we want to do is add some JavaScript so we can make the button do something. Um, so let's add a script tag inside of our WebC component, um, and then we'll use the custom elements uh, registry to define a new component. So window.customElements.define. Uh, and then we'll use my counter since that's the name of the component that we're, that we're using. And inside of this custom element uh, definition, we'll pass a class that extends the HTML element. Um, which is pretty standard for web components. And then we'll use the connected callback, which will trigger uh, when the component's available. All right, so we have a high here that shows up. So this is working. So let's, inside of this component, let's add the um, behavior that will trigger the button. So let's get the elements that we're working with. So we want um, the button. Query selector scope button, and then we'll get the output element as well. So let's add an event listener. Click. Um, and then we'll set the value to the output inner text, and we'll parse that to a number. Put in our text equals value plus plus. All right, it is doing the thing. All right, all right. So what happens when we disable this? Uh, we still get the original. When JavaScript is disabled, we still get the original output here. Um, the problem here is when JavaScript is not yet available, this button doesn't do anything. Um, so 
what's a better experience with that? We don't want a button that doesn't have any function um, shown to the user when it's not yet available. So let's use some, some CSS to hide that button until we're ready to make it interactive. And we can do this using scoped CSS. And I like to use defined, which is a web component available thing that will evaluate when the component is not yet registered. So when it's not defined, when it's not yet hydrated, as you will, um, we want to hide it. You can see that that hid the entire component. I don't want to do that. Let's do the button only. Great, so when I disable JavaScript, the button is no longer there. Amazing. Um, and you can do some fancier things. Maybe you want to have like a disabled state with a cursor here. So when we disable this, it will, um, I don't know, look like it's not yet available. And then when it's hydrated, it will toggle back. Um, so you have a bunch of different progressive enhance enhancement options there. Um, another thing we can do is just add a bunch more of these. And you can see that they're all per instance. Um, and we could also add a prop here uh, to set a starting value. So let's do that. So let's come back here to our HTML and we'll change it to use value. Get some undefineds back there, so let's assign a default here. And now we have a bunch of different components on our page that all have their own instance variables. And that's the uh, interactivity is all managed through web components. Um, there's no shadow DOM at play here, there's nothing really complex. Uh, we're just using a bunch of different components that run through the Web C compiler um, and output our markup here. And if we want to see the markup that comes back here, we can kind of see what the progressive enhancement experience is like. Um, yeah, not much to it. All right, I did want to mention one more thing before I let y'all go. Um, I did look up the documentation for the output element, and I think that we want to add a for attribute um, to point to the uh, form element that controls this. So to do that, uh, WebC actually has a brand new feature as of today um, that is a for free uh, UID property that's available inside of your components. So um, if I want to add an ID here um, that has this dot UID, which is the new for free property available here, um, that's going to be a global or excuse me, a component instance unique ID uh, that you can use for these uh, this type of use case. So I'm going to use that here and assign it in both places. And you can see here that we get a matching uh, ID between these two form, this form element and the output. And then if you look at the different instances, it's actually different for each instance of the component. Um, and you won't have collisions there on your page. So it's a really easy way to do accessibility mapping if you have an ARIA controls attribute that you need to map to something um, or with forms. It's a really great way to, in your component, have a an, an easy reference uh, ID that you can use um, for that kind of mapping. All right, so that's an interactive component. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and look for more advanced WebC tutorial videos to come. Thanks, y'all.